catch up to him. They're walking side by side. There is no moment where Donald Trump says, go away, don't talk to me. There's no security stopping. There was security at the event. There's no security stopping Michelle Fields from walking side by side with less than six inches away from Donald Trump. There is no moment that we talked about in the example you gave me. But let's flip the script here a second, Russ. For your theory to be correct, Michelle Fields has to be lying. The witness has to be lying. The video has to be wrong. Uh, the police abuse their discretion and the prosecutor's in the back. But that all has to happen for you to be right. How does that happen, Russ? How is all this confluence of events happening all at the same time in a conspiracy against Donald Trump? Her lying, the witness lying, the video being wrong, multiple videos being wrong, Donald Trump not being in any fear of imminent danger or harm, the police abusing their discretion in, in saying, because the police have used their discretion to determine that there was a crime here, and the prosecutor going along with it all because there's a political witch hunt going on here. Explain to me how all of this comes together in one amalgamation of events just because it's Donald Trump. All right, Gene, all straw man arguments. I'll address them shortly. But, Gene, what was the reporter's name you claimed was the witness of this? I believe his name was uh, Bettis is the last name. Terrace. Uh, Terrace? Okay, okay, thank you. So let's hear, what I Ter- tried. let's hear what Terrace had to say. I was hoping this was it. So here's a little transcript of a conversation that Michelle Fields and, and this guy, uh, I believe it was Ben Terrace? Let that's me... that, maybe that's where I got the Bettis from, B. Terrace. There ah, you go. There you go. So, ben Terrace. So this is uh, shortly after the, uh, the event or the... Uh, what would you call it? I don't want to say the battery because that's not clearly not what happened. Let's call it the incident. How about that? Is that neutral the enough? Incident. For you? So, Terrace, she, he says, "Are you okay?" Michelle Field says, "Holy sh!" You know what the word? Thank is. you for doing that. So then Terrace says, "Yeah, he just threw you down." Okay, so that's what Terrace says, right? So let's let's continue the conversation. Real hyperbole, but okay, go ahead. So I can't believe he just did that. That was so hard. Was that Corey Lewandowski? That's um, Michelle Field saying, Field saying that. that. Because it came from, as the video shows, he came from behind well, and grabbed Hold it. on, your witness. I'm gonna, we will watch the video, so let's hear what your eyewitness is saying, Gene. So Terrace responds, yeah, like, what threat were you? All right, so now Michelle Field responds, that was insane. You should have felt how hard he grabbed me. That's insane. I've never had anyone do that to me from a campaign. Clearly sounds like somebody who's shaking up. All right, she's, she's offended. All right, whatever, okay. So now Terrace comes back. Can I put that in my story? All right, so now the, the pieces start falling together. And you There's know no what? Absolutely. That, that's a motivation for a, a reporter to get a scoop. There's he, definitely something called the question nibbling there. at the cheese. Okay, so Michelle Fields goes on. Yeah, go for it. That was really awful. That's so unprofessional. That's Michelle Fields. Here's the money shot, guys. This is what Terrace says. Ready? He really just almost threw you down on the ground. Really? Now, this is me talking, Russell. So, really? He almost threw you down on the ground? Can anyone watch that video and tell me that he really almost threw her down to the ground? Or is this a political witch hunt? Gene, I have a couple more things to say before you jump in here because you addressed a lot of things in your, your little thing. Here's the question I have for I you. I just want to do a plug and then let you continue real quick. I just want to say that we got a chat room going right now during the show. We got some comments coming into the chat as Russ is talking. Go to www.behindemelinesradio.us. Click on the Listen Live button, and you can join in the chat, watch the chat, see what people are saying. Lots of great comments in coming, coming in so far tonight. Russ, continue. Go ahead. I hate when he does this. He derails me in the middle of like a heated, passionate point. It's actually a legal tactic. Uh, of course he is. He tries to derail me, but it's not going to work because I take notes, people. So besides that... Full side witness that Gene just, uh, you know, who clearly, False. clearly trying to do it for a story. False. Watch the video. He didn't almost throw anyone down. That's ridiculous. If it were two men, as a matter of fact, here was the second point I was going to make before you try to derail me, but it will never work, folks. Because I'm Russ Gallo. Um, <laughs> I, I'm loving this, by the way. I'm if, loving it. If it was not Michelle Fields, let's let's erase Michelle Fields out of there, right? A pretty girl. Uh, she's a friend of the show. She's a conservative. She worked for Breitbart. Let's erase Michelle Fields out of the equation. Let's go to the exact opposite of what Michelle Fields is. Let's go to Gene Berardelli. No, let's say... No, forget about Gene Berardelli. Let's say it was Bill Maher or Rachel Maddow who was claiming that a Ted Cruz campaign manager battered one of them. Bill Maher or Rachel Maddow. Same video, but replaced Michelle Fields with one of them. I don't think... Anyone would be agreeing that that was a battery if it was Bill Maher or Rachel Maddow. Well, first of all, I think if it was Bill Maher, he'd be swinging. 
as soon as he's grabbed. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's say that. I think that people's reaction would be different. It doesn't change. Don't, but don't deflect. You're making, you know, you made a lot of straw man arguments before that is that a you huge still haven't conspiracy. addressed, by the way. Uh, let's address that real quick because I don't want to take your time. But, you know, the video is wrong and the police are wrong. No. The video shows what it shows. The police had a person claiming to be a victim, so they filed the charges and report, which they're supposed to do. And it's, you as a lawyer know this better than anyone. It's up to a court to decide, a jury to decide whether or not that video meets the threshold or it may go to a grand jury beforehand, meets the threshold to not only file the charge, but uh, convict, convict the uh, defendant, in this case, Lewandowski. Absolutely, so, but that's not the Everyone did right their now. job. There's no conspiracy. Michelle Fields claims she's a victim. I could say that I think that you battered me right now and go to a police precinct right here in Brooklyn and file a charge. Uh, the police are doing their due diligence by filing that charge. That's all it is. There's I, no mass conspiracy. Okay, so then the police were well within their discretion upon looking at the evidence to they then say that there's a charge there. They don't even need to look at the evidence. You can walk in right... If you dial 911 right now and say that I threatened to kill you, they'll make an arrest. And then it's up to a, a, a court to decide whether or not I'm guilty. So uh, the, the eyewitness account or the victim's account is enough probable cause to make the arrest. So that's what they did. That doesn't mean that there's anything there. But that's not what they did. They held a press conference, Russ, and they said... Because this is a political case. This is not your everyday run-of-the-mill. Someone's trying to... A bum on the street trying to talk to your mother, so you pulled his arm, and now all of a sudden you're getting... This is not one of those cases that would never happen in real life. This is Michelle Fields, a a woman who I assume easily bruises, because I don't see an assault or a battery on that video, even though Florida statutes are pretty vague when it comes to any uh, any intentional touching that's non-consensual. That's ridiculous. It's not any more vague other than any other statute. New York State has no criminal code for a battery. They just call it assault. It's the same thing. Does not exist in New York State. Most read, states do not have it. That's read, ridiculous. Florida York, is over the top there. Read the New York Penal Code. I've read right. the New York Penal Law, not cover to cover, but I know about assaults. Assaults and batteries, two different things, and there's no such thing as a criminal uh, uh, battery. That's ridiculous. It's actually uh, in Article 120 of the Penal Code. A uh, person commits the crime of assault in the third degree if a person knowingly and recklessly causes bodily injury to another person, or with criminal negligence, the person accuses bodily injury... Uh, causes bodily injury to another person by means of a deadly weapon. So it could be either be bodily harm to another person or negligence with a weapon. So then it comes down to... Third degree. Wait, 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 wait. There it is for you, Russ. It's right there. Hold on, I have a plug before you continue. Go ahead. No, do your I'm plug. joking. But I put my... So I, it all it comes down to... Who cares? First of all... As a conservative, there are way too many laws on the books and they're way too vague and you can break the law every day without even trying. But what, it, what this case is going to come down to is whether or not people believe that, that first of all, th- that this is not a political witch hunt. That's, that's the first thing. Jury, jury nullification would happen if this got to trial, which it never will. This is, I'm going on the record. This will never get to trial. Michelle Fields will either withdraw these charges or, or, or say she's not going to testify or, or, or there will be a plea deal to something much less than a battery, which is only a misdemeanor in Florida anyway. Guaranteed that that's going to happen. Rush just said the magic words that he's going to go on record, and that is a great opportunity for me to talk about. Of course, to, to stop from my second point, but go ahead. Go on record.com. Sign up right now. What are you passionate about? What do you stand for? Let the world know. Go on record.com. Continue, Russ. The only point of contention is going to be whether or not, besides the first thing that I just mentioned before, Gene so rudely interrupted me, is whether or not that bruise was a direct result of the touching... And constitutes battery. That's the, that's the legal question there. And honestly, it's ridiculous to even uh, entertain this. Again, if it were two men involved in this, it would not be an issue. This is insanity. The legal questions are there. It's up to a jury to decide. People hate lawyers. This is ridiculous. This is why Donald Trump is going to be the next president. You want to talk about straw man arguments? There's one right there. This People is why Donald Trump is going to be the next president, honestly. Everyone you can go hates down the weeds. You can go down into the weeds. I know Jesus said, I'm going to let him say because I like this saying. But uh, people go down into the weeds and nitpick. People hate that stuff. People hate that stuff. This is common sense. You watch that video, nothing happened. Nothing. Gene Everyone hates a lawyer until everybody needs a lawyer. So I'm not going to buy that strong man. I know that our, our audience is smarter than that than to buy into that nonsense. And by the way, if you look in the chat room, D- Diana, a former president of Brooklyn YRs, 
uh, former president of the state contributor YRs. to the show. Uh, yeah, former chairman of the state wire, New York State YRs. Uh, she's not a Trump supporter yet. She's a Ted Cruz uh, supporter, but even she thinks that this is kind of ridiculous. I think that reasonable people can disagree on the facts of the case. What I'm talking about right now is their legal sufficiency to bring the charges. Yes, there is. Is this a political witch hunt? I already said that. Thank you for making my argument for me. Yes, I think it is. I think that if this was a common person on the street and another common person on the street and the name Donald Trump was not involved or any name for that matter was involved of any sort of national, regional, or local note, this would not be a case. Gene Burdelli hates black people. Oh, I'm channeling Kanye. I'm sorry. Um, wow. I right. do want to get Yak involved in this because I'm well, dying to hear his well, take. Well, we need to get Yak's take on this. Uh, Yak off Bard. R- Russ, what did we call him before the show? That, that was phenomenal, the, the name that we gave him. He had a lot of names, but we're going to have well, to the, the, the ones, one. Only the, best the ones one, that we allow on air, guys. The, yeah, the one that's uh, PC enough to get on the air. So he is an originalist. Not only when it comes to the Constitution, but also when it comes to the Bible. Our Old Testament friend, Yaakov Bard. Okay, first of all, let's be very clear. It is the Torah. There is no old or new. It's the... He doesn't believe in the sequel. He only likes the original. <laughs> I, yes, the sequel. Or as we like to call I, it I'm not going to say the sequel sucks, like, Or as we like to call it the come prequel. On, we actually call it the prequel. The prequel. The pre- it's not the sequel. Go, but go ahead. All right. All right. Chime in here. Well, now, now, listen. Yak Bard, no fan of Donald Trump, by the way. I... Ah, uh, listen, but I will go on record. Go on record.com. I'm going to go on record <laughs> to say that that I will support. I am not hashtag never Trump. I used to be, but I matured and I'm going to. So now that we've established that you're a flip flopper, continue. I am a flip flopper. Uh, only when. Don't buy his s- arguments, Yak. You stay uh, on no, track. No, no. I am not going to. I them. am not. Uh, uh, he can try, but uh, but uh, but he can't derail me just like he can't derail you. He, Yak's off the rails. You can't derail someone off the rails. Gene, yeah. you're off duty. This is not court. This is the this is this is airtime. Now, let me tell you this. Look, it's just not. You know, I don't know Michelle Fields. You you peop, you two know who she is. So I'm not going to com- comment on her. I'm sorry, just this is not this story. Just not is not sexy enough. There isn't enough info that will be like, oh my god, Corey Lewandowski. Sorry, I'm way too loud. I'm, it's been sexy enough to dominate the news cycle today, though. Well, of course, it's a news cycle because it's a chief of staff of a major campaign, a front runner, which makes hopefully, it sexy. Hopefully, Let hopefully, hopefully, talk. hopefully, a declining front runner. Look, I'm associated I with agree. the Ted Cruz campaign. I look, I want him to win my congressional district. I'm very involved in that. I want every single Jewish person in New York to vote against Trump and for Cruz. However, that being said, I don't think this story is going to hurt Trump. I just hope it doesn't hurt Cruz. Well, you know what? This is a great time to talk about transitioning from the merits of the legal argument to now let's talk about perception and let's talk about how this may affect the race in Wisconsin and beyond. But before we do that, thanks for listening to Behind Enemy Lines Radio, guys. He just I'm derailed Gene. himself. I love it. With a plug. <laughs> I'm Gene and he's Russ. And, and while we got you listening to the show, check us out at www.behindenemylinesradio.us. Check us out on the Facebooks and the Twitters at BEL underscore radio. And if you miss any part of this show live here on Spreaker Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern, Check us out on any one of our rebroadcast outlets, including WNJC 1360 AM, Philadelphia's Renaissance Station. Time change on that, by the way, folks. We'll be airing now, Wednesdays at 5 p.m., Drive Time Radio at WNJC. We're also on ICRN, the Internet's conservative radio network, Red State Talk Radio, High Plains Talk Radio, and Sackheads Media, and K98Talk.com. And if you miss us at any one of those rebroadcasting outlets, you can listen to us on demand anytime you want at Spreaker, iTunes, Player FM, Podbay, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcasts, and any other fine outlets where you can find your podcasts. Now let's get back to what we were talking about, which is Do the... Do you remember? Because I was going to say, I don't... I, 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 I'm, I'm completely lost. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Well, yeah, that's just, that's because it's a day that ends in Y. But uh, we're talking about the, the political ramifications this may have for Donald Trump. And Ted Cruz, and I guess John Kasich, if we still consider him a candidate, uh, going forward uh, into uh, Wisconsin. Uh, Russ, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to pull McLaughlin Group on you right now. Here we go. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being no effect whatsoever, and 10 being catastrophic failure of a campaign, 
How does this incident affect the Trump train?